All right, in this video, we're going to go through your payroll setup interview. All right, so we've already entered the payroll service key. Now we're going to go on down here under employees to payroll setup. Okay, it's going to load the setup screen here. All right, so first things first, it takes you to the screen. It does have here the the payroll setup checklist. This is a great thing to print out and get yourself organized before you start. I'll pull that up here on the screen. It basically has the information that you need in order to get your company properly set up. Okay. Also has a couple of forms down here, uh, W-4 and uh, different payroll information that you would need here. All right. So that's available. If you just click on that, it's going to go online and find that for you. So I'm going to go ahead and say continue here. And it gives you instructions throughout the whole way. So first we're going to do uh, company setup. Okay. So this is where you set up the basics of your different types of compensation to your employees. Salary, hourly, bonuses. Do you have commissions? Do you have tips? Okay. So, and we can always add more of these later. All right. All right. Should commissions be calculated on dollar amounts per unit sold or percentage of sales? So we can do dollar amounts per unit sold or produced and say finish. All right, so it's going to set these up automatically for us. Now what's important here is that you do set up the hourly and the overtime and double time through the system. You don't want to set those up individually on their own because right now what it does is it actually calculates if they work overtime, if you choose overtime, it'll choose 1.5 times their hourly rate. All right. So if I edit this, you can see here, it's a, it's a automatic setup in the system. So it'll calculate 1.5 times your hourly rate. The other reason for that is if you're going to track workers comp through QuickBooks, you need to make sure that this is set up as an actual overtime rate, not as an individual, like you just go in and create a new one called overtime because uh, that way your workers comp reports will pull them properly as overtime versus regular time. Okay. You can see here when you edit any of the payroll items, you can go in and choose what account type it is and also what account it needs to be applied to. So right now we're going to payroll expenses, but if, for example, this was a uh, cost of goods sold, you could change that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and say next. <clears throat> Okay, so notice here, this is where we say it's time and a half. You can have a custom field here, so it's 1.75, 1.9, whatever you have as time and a half or overtime compensation, but we're going to leave it as time and a half. Okay, commission, same thing. If I edit this and take a look at it, I can change the account that it goes to if we have a different account rather than payroll expenses. We can also change this at a later time too. All right, so I'm going to say next here. Gives you a default rate or amount. All right, so I can say my default is $150. Say finish. Okay, so now we've set up a couple different or a couple different compensation items. Uh, again, we can always go back and change this, and we'll show you that in a little in a later video. But I'm going to continue on now so we can get through this payroll setup. All right, so now we have the employee benefits section. Okay. So you can say, do you provide health and dental vision? All right, we do for now. Let's say also we have S-Corp Medical because we have some, and we are an S-Corp and the owners have some medical there. Um, and if there's any other insurances, you can add those here. And we're going to go ahead and say next. Health insurance, we can say, does a company pay for all of it or company and employee? We're going to say company and employee. The employee portion is deducted before or after taxes are calculated. You want to make sure and talk with your CPA or your bookkeeper about uh, how to calculate your taxes appropriately. So if it's after taxes um, that they deduct the medical or if it's a uh, section 125, which means it's before taxes. So we're just going to go ahead and say section 125. Okay, you want to set up who the vendor is and we're just going to choose a vendor. Let's just say City of East Bayshore. You can put in your account number here. That way you can print out on the checks. Okay, how often do you pay it? I pay quarterly on the 15th day of the previous quarter's liabilities. Okay, next. Okay, dental insurance. Does the company pay for all of it? We'll say the company pays for all of that one. Set it up again. We're still going to pay the same person. 
and we pay annually on the January the 17th next. Vision, we're going to say employee pays all of it. Okay. Again, it's going to ask me before or after taxes. So I'm going to say deducted after taxes next. Choose the same. All right. I don't need regular payments on this one, so it's not going to set up a payroll schedule. The payment schedule for the S Corp medical insurance. Okay. So we're going to say the same. And we pay monthly on the 15th of the month and finish. Okay. So now I have all my different employee benefit insurance set up. So I'm going to continue there. Now we're going to go in. You can set up 401k, 457b, IRA, all these different accounts. Okay. So we're going to just say 401k and it's not going to have Roth designation right now. Again, now if you don't understand these different things, you might want to bring in someone who is a payroll specialist um, who can help you set it up. But 401k, let's just go ahead and say that. Who's the vendor we pay? What's our account number? We pay monthly on the 15th. Again, this is just going to set up a payroll liability schedule for us on the 15th of every month. So there's our 401k. Notice it does add for me a company match in case we do do a match. And I'm going to go ahead and say continue. Do your employees get paid time off or sick time? Now, if they get just PTO, you don't have vacation and sick, just choose one of them. And most likely it's vacation. Uh, if they get both, you want to check off both. We're just going to say they get vacation on this one. Okay, so it gives you an hourly vacation schedule and a salary vacation. Now, if I go ahead and edit this, all right, it says what expense does it go to? So if you need to choose the expense account or if it's a COGS account, anything like that. So I'm going to say finish here. And again, to set these up to go to COGS, we can do that at a later point when you go into the list view. So I'm going to go ahead and say continue. Now we're going to say additional deductions. Do you have cash advances that it gives your employees? Do you have mileage reimbursements? Do you have wage garnishments? Does anybody have any garnishments? Uh, so we're just going to add wage garnishments for now. Who do we pay that to? What's the account number over there? You don't necessarily need to use an account number in case you have to add the employee's um, account number specifically and say finish. So we have a wage garnishment and we're gonna continue. So that sets up all the employee benefits. Now again, when we go through the list after the fact, which I'll show you just a little bit at the end, but in, later in another video, you can go ahead and edit more in depth where these things go, okay? So we have our employee set up, and we're gonna say continue. Okay, so I have one employee set up in here, and it's get, telling me I've got a warning here, so I've gotta edit this employee. I need to put in their address. All right, and next, what's their social security number? What's their hire date? You have to have a hire date. All right, and I'm gonna say next again. Are they hourly, salary? What's no compensation? So I'm gonna go ahead and mark them as salary. Now you wanna do that, this is salary per year, per month, per paycheck. I'm just gonna go ahead and say per year, uh, 50,000. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and say next. Do they have 401k? Yes, and they're gonna. We're gonna say that it's 10 percent. All right, health insurance, dental. We're gonna go ahead and skip all this for now. Okay, uh, this is for the vacation time. How many hours do they get every year, or per paycheck, or per month? So we're gonna go ahead and say 10 hours per month and the maximum number of hours is 80, okay? And they um, don't get time off until a certain date, let's just say 2004. So you have to work there for two years before you get vacation accrual. How many hours do they have as of today? How many hours do they have as of today, or used as of today? And then we can say, say 40, and they use five, and say next. Okay, do they want to have check into a payment card. That's a card that you give to your employees and they can either go, it's a debit card so they can use it like a debit card or they can go get money out of an ATM, certain ATMs. You can do a direct deposit to their bank account. Um, you can also split it to two different direct deposits, but I'm just going to leave it as a check for now. 
What state do they have withholdings in? Have they ever worked in a different state for you? All right, and go ahead and say no. Filing status, this is gonna come from their W-4. Allowances five, extra withholding. So if they want an extra amount withheld every month, every quarter, I mean, every paid period, okay? Anything here extra? Are they subject to Medicare, Social Security, federal employment? Usually these are just gonna be standard and pre-filled in for you what the standard is for most employees. Okay. Is there, are they subject to any local taxes? We're gonna say no for now and finish. So now Jamie's all set up. Now you can add additional employees uh, here too. It'll just take you through those exact same phases. Um, you can also add these employees at a later time, which you'll see in another video, how we talk about how to quickly add employees. All right. So we're gonna go ahead into the taxes area. What forms do we file? 941, okay. We have the federal taxes that the system automatically sets up for us, so we can look through and make sure that we're not missing any. All right, we can continue here. Okay, so it's gonna ask us what's our uh, state tax unemployment rate. So you should be getting that from your um, state individually. They should send you a form, so I'm just gonna put in here 1% for now. Okay, one or more of these taxes changed in 2011. So if your taxes changed mid-year, you would check that off and it would you would be able to say when it changed. So let's say here it changed to 0 0.67, 0 0.67, okay, and finish. Okay, so now I set up my state tax rate and we're going to set up our payroll schedules, okay. So for the 940, we pay the U.S. Treasury. Again, it's pre-filling that based on what it knows. Uh, how often do we pay? Quarterly, annually, quarterly is usually used. All right, we're gonna go ahead and click next. It's just warning me, are you sure you need to pay that, that, that agency? Okay, so we're gonna choose quarterly here and how often we pay. Texas Workforce Commission, that's who you choose individually, who you're gonna be paying for your SUI, your state unemployment. Um, now, if you have a different one, of course, you come in here and choose it. I'm just going to go ahead and say finish. Oops. All right, it might not pick that up. Okay, there we go. I wasn't sure how many, how many digits need to be in there. All right, so we're going to continue on. Now, again, all of these things you need to really check out before you continue. You shouldn't just be pre-filling them in or filling them in quickly how I'm doing here because you want to make sure they're accurate because this is going to be what you've file on what your what your um, payroll tax returns are going to be based on so you want to make sure that you have all these accurate all right so now what you're going to be doing is entering your year-to-date payroll so if you start using the Intuit payroll service mid-quarter you need to enter the previous all previous quarters as summary and then the detail for that existing quarter so what we re usually recommend is that you enter your payroll or you start using into a payroll at the end of a quarter. And especially if it's coming up to end of year, you want to start using it on January 1st. Okay. So it's going to ask me, has your company issued paychecks this year? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. All right. So now it's going to take me through. <clears throat> All right, it's going to say, I need you to enter all the information for Jamie James. What, what is the payments that you have given to them this year? So you can do it again on the quarterly basis or you can do it on a total basis. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say done entering paychecks. But basically what you would do is you would go through and you would say, okay, February, here are the different paychecks. I entered paycheck number 1,000, salary pay was $5,000, federal tax withholding was $500. Again, this is what you'd put in here, the actual based off of your payroll that you have. Social Security withholding was $55, Medicare withholding was $25, employee 401k deduction was $500. Paycheck must have a check date. Oh, I got to put the check date in there. 0201, 2001, 
2011. All right. And so then it's going to save this payroll data. So if I'm, say, done entering paychecks, what that's going to do is it's actually going to calculate based on what she's earned during the year. If I, for some reason, calculated incorrectly what the federal tax withholding should be, Social Security, it's actually going to pick it up and fix it for me on her next payroll. All right. So then we're going to go ahead and, and you go in and enter what your your tax rates are. So you can see here, we can see what amounts were already paid. Uh, what we should have paid, okay? So I'm going to say recalculate taxes. All right, so if I click here, I can put in what amounts I've already paid to the federal and save. Whoops. Okay, so it picks it up for me. Now it says balance remaining, you know, because I was supposed to pay 500, I did pay 500, balance remains zero. So here, let's just say I paid 200. It's going to say I still owe $110 to Social Security for the company, and I still owe zero for this one, Medicare. I owe $2,250. All right, and then I'm just going to say zero and 40 and zero. Okay, so I'm going to say done entering payments. All right, non-tax payments, I'm not going to have any, and I'm going to go ahead and continue. Now, notice you can view your reports here, so you can see uh, the historical data here. So you can see all the information, export it to Excel, print it out, so you can make sure and verify everything that you've entered. But I'm going to go ahead and continue. So it's going to ask me, do you want to check your payroll data? So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Okay. Okay. Right, it's going to tell me that there are errors because obviously I did not uh, fix my, I did not calculate my payroll exactly. So it's going to tell me that there are errors. I'm going to go ahead and ignore that for now and continue and continue. Okay, do you need to fill in 941 for this year? I've already, so you can say no, I've already filed or yes, I need to file one, but I'm going to go ahead and say no for now. And then it's going to ask you to um, fill in the quarterly tax, the information from the quarterly tax returns that you've already had this year. So you're going to go ahead and fill those in. I'm going to go ahead and say next, next. All right, it's going to review the differences for me. All right, notice how it's saying there's a discrepancy here because I put zero for all my 941s, but QuickBooks is calculating that I actually should have done some things in there. So it's going to pick it up for me and tell me that I need to fix this. Okay. Basically, what QuickBooks does for you there is it, it reconciles your payroll data for you and you, it makes you go in and fix it. But for now, we're going to go ahead and skip that because when you're actually going through your payroll, you'll have to do that. You know, you'll have to go through and fix your, your forms individually. I'm just going to go ahead and finish up. No. All right. Okay. And then once you get through and your, your forms are now reconciled, you will be able to go ahead and process payroll. So for now, I'm going to exit out of here and show you again. Look at this in another video, but just as a quick peek, you now have your payroll items list set up in here. And notice it has all the items for you. Your salary, your hourly, your commission bonus, your wage garnishment is in here. All your taxes are in here. Your tax rates are in there and uh, your annual limits. Everything's in there. And you can go in individually now and edit these items. So see how I can now move it to a cost of goods sold if I want to. All right. So it's a great, this is kind of a quick way to enter the information, but when you're going through and doing your initial setup, doing the payroll setup interview helps you really guide, uh, helps to really guide you through the process, especially if you're not used to doing payroll.